What is going on guys? Another episode on the T5 Transporter. Everything wrong with a 282,000 mile T5. Bit of a buyer's guide. If you're thinking about buying one, have a look at this first. Let's have a little butchers. So look, before we get into it, there's just something I want to run over. As in the last video, we got it back. We uh, got it fired up. Got it home over 100 miles. It was for entertainment purposes, but there was a handful of you dropping the comments and uh, you was not as happy as the other people. Now, yes, the van had been sat uh, for a little while and I knew there was water leaking, there was a few few bits about it, but um, there's a few comments about it being unroadworthy, you wasn't too happy. Now look, what I did in the last video with my editing skills, I put a little clip of me kicking the tire, uh, uh, pretending that that's all I'd done, I fired it up, I kicked the tire and drove it home. Well, that's not the case. While we was there, I was there for about two or three hours picking it up. I didn't do any filming because the, uh, the people I was buying it off was there. And uh, I was underneath it, trying to slow the water leak down or trying to fix the water leak. And I was checking everything that's on there, brake pipes, CV boots, CV joints, and all stuff like that to make it roadworthy. I've been in this garage about 13, 14 years now. And all I've done since doing that, apart from making some videos lately, I've done MOT work and pre-MOTs. Car fails an MOT, they bring it to me, I fix it, read the list, send it back. I know I don't have a piece of paper to say I'm an MOT tester, but I have been literally fixing MOT work for over 10 years now. I know everything they look for, brake pipes, CV boots, track rod ends, ball joints, tyres, brakes, and the list goes on. And I have fixed everything from top to bottom to make a car roadworthy. And while I was there slowing up the water leak, I was underneath, laying on my back, a couple of hours, looking at everything, because I didn't want to drive on a main road with something that's unroadworthy. For one, I didn't want to break down and be stuck in the road and it cost a lot of money. I obviously didn't want to endanger anyone else on the road. So I did go over everything while I was there. Brakes, tyres, lights, all the running gear. And although it did have a knocking on the front suspension, with regards to MOT, you can have movement in a ball joint you just can't have a split rubber. A split rubber is a failure. Movement in a ball joint or a track rod end, that is just an advisory. And I was happy with everything underneath. We'd get it on the ramp and have a little butchers. And I did add it to my motor trade policy for my benefit and the safety of others. Hopefully that clears it up for a few of you. Let's, uh, let's get into having a look at it. Now, it is tidy. I have given it a clean. If you haven't seen the video where we found it, brought it back to the workshop, give it a bit of a clean. I'll add that video into the description of this one. Um, and yeah, I'm really happy with it. We've got it as a project, similar to the Caddy, hopefully you can see that behind me. The Caddy was in a lot worse condition, um, body work wise, dirty inside, dirty outside. Absolutely everything was hanging. And uh, yeah, this is a better candidate. We're gonna put the later front end on, later tailgate, some carpet lining inside, some nice wheels. We've got to do something about the engine. It boils over and it leaks water. I did mention at the start of the last video and I did mention to the people I was buying it off, I'm pretty sure that it's the EGR cooler. But of course we got there and it had absolutely no EGR cooler at all. And uh, it's probably the head gasket while it's pressurizing. Had a few comments from you guys mentioning the water pump. Apparently the impellers on the water pump come off. So we get this engine out another day, next video, because we're gonna swap it out for the PD-130. It's the st slightly stronger engine. If I'm going to build a van, I want it to be ultra reliable. And this engine's done 282k. I'm not saying it's a weak engine or it's going to die, but I'd rather put a lower mileage engine in that I know is never going to break down. So when I pull the engine out, we're going to have the water pump off, we're going to have the head off and find out why it was boiling over. If the water pump's failed, that would be why the head gasket's let go and it weren't the head gasket's fault. But we'll find that out for another day. Anyway, enough chit chat. Let's have a quick walk round it. We're going to get it on the ramp and see what's wrong with it because I'm looking under here and it may have been maintained and serviced but I still think a lot of the parts are original. So I'm going to give you a rough idea on what things are going to cost and what's wrong with it. Ball joints, wishbones, track rod ends. Um, it's just had a new clutch. If you was to go and buy one of these and it needed a new clutch, I do know from previous experience, my good friend Alf had one of these about 10 years ago, exactly the same engine, same age, 
and he paid a thousand pound for a new clutch in a garage just down the road. That's new dual mass flywheel, new clutch, slave cylinder, new gear oil, and labour was just shy of a grand. So if your clutch is high, the pedal's high, or it's slipping, or it feels shaky on the pedal, bear in mind it could cost you a thousand pound to have it fixed. Anyway, let's have a walk around the outside. I'll quickly show you the inside and uh, let's get it on the ramp. Now obviously the bodywork we can't include on like a buyer's guide because you could have a van that's a couple of years old, loads of dents in it. You could have a van 05 plate with hardly any dents in it and that is just down to the driver, bad luck, bad driving or whatever. But we will quickly just run around it. Um, and there is something I do want to point out actually to do with the bodywork. We've done 282,000 miles and there's a little bit of rust on the wing. Now. I can save that because it isn't too bad. It, well, I say that. Well, anyway, what I need to do is grind the metal from the inside because the rust has come from the inside out. Because there's not much paint on the inside of the wing, that is why this has started to rust. If you're going to buy one of these and you do spot a little bit of rust, even small like that, you might have to replace the wings and that's going to cost you two, three hundred quid a side. And that's buying the wing and getting it painted. And if you've got some fancy colour, you might need to paint the door as well because going edge to edge with some colours doesn't work out. 2005, 282,000 miles and we've got a little bit of rust on the wing. It's not too bad, not compared to some of the other vehicles I've seen, Mercedes and stuff, because they are really bad. Anyway, rest of it is not too bad. We do have a few other little spots along the bottom. They're really easy for me to fix and paint, but if you used to have to pay to get it done, it might add up a bit. You have got a lot of real estate that needs painting, but as far as 17, 18 years old, it has fared up really well. He has put some alloy wheels and tyres on. I'll show you the steel wheels in a minute, and the steel wheels, they're really rusty. Tyres are shot, but tyres, again, aren't included in like a buyer's guide because they can wear down, you can replace them, and you'd never know. Um, but yeah, bodywork is really nice. And if you think this side was nice, the passenger side is even nicer. Um, there is a couple of, you know, the small, I call them thumb dents, tiny little ones, parking dents. But other than that, it's really straight. Um, there's probably even less rust or little chips along this side. There's a few along the sliding door, but that's to be expected, getting in and out. Um, yeah, really nice, actually. I was really happy with it. When trying to build a nice vehicle, it's nice to have a good base to start with. Something that's rusty, punted in with dents, bits hanging off. It's not very nice to start with. Um, so we're happy with this one. One thing I do want to point out, the roller on the bottom of the sliding door has slid down. The bearings have fallen out and it's dropped down. You can buy these rollers for about 15 quid on eBay and you could easily change them yourself. There's just two Torx bolts in there. Note they're M bolts, I believe, multi-spline I call them. Uh, two of them bolts, someone to hold the door because when you undo the bolts, the door's going to drop in and then you pull this part along here, hold it up at a skew if angle and it comes out. New one in, replace it in, line it up with the bolt holes and see how it is. They're really easy to do. There's one on the top and there is one along the back. You'd probably spend about 30 quid replacing all of them. And you might as well while you're there. Quickly getting inside, there's the steel wheels I mentioned. They're a bit past it. If you wanted them to look nice and shiny, i.e. put a bit of silver on them, they are a little bit far gone. So you'd probably have to buy a new set of steel wheels. This was a carpet fitter's van. So everything on the inside is really nice. If this was a builder's van, you'd have a lot of dents in it, all the wood would be knackered. But where it was a carpet van, it's really nice. Literally a clean off, we can carpet line it, put some fresh boards up and it will look really nice. With regards to the inside, VW, they did make a good hard wearing interior. Obviously the gear stick gator and the gear selector needs replacing. Steering wheel's definitely done the mileage. Door handle's dropped off, but seats, look, there's absolutely no wear on them. I did clean this seat. I haven't cleaned the driver's seat yet, but I think I'm gonna put two single seats, like two cockpit seats. I've got two spare Toran seats from my caddy build, so I'm gonna offer them up and see how they fit. But other than that, the inside's not too bad. We have got the ACs on this, and you can see the center dial's missing, center knob, whatever you wanna call it. Now, if you had to replace that little panel, they are about 200 quid. I've already looked, but I can find just the knobs on their own for about 30 quid. Happy days on that. 
and yeah interior is really nice i have had all of it out and we've cleaned under the rubber matting we've cleaned the rubber matting and it did come up really clean let's have a look under the bonnet at the moment it's nice and tidy under here because i've cleaned it but here's a quick shot of what it looked like and i think this is untouched now if you open the bonnet of a motor you're going to see and it looks all dirty like this but the mileage is high don't be put off because it's really not that bad if you look at the oil the the grease the grime it's all really dry now if you look underneath a vehicle and it's all soaking wet with oil then you've got an oil leak but where this is built up over 282,000 miles it didn't bother me at all let's have a little look on how it looks now and I gave it a good clean off truck wash paintbrush rubbed it all in and a pressure washed off someone mentioned in the last video about they don't like the thought of pressure washing engine bays I've done a fair few over my time and I've never had one not start after being done this one VW we've got no ECU in the engine bay we've got no fuse box and the only electrical bits well there isn't many there's none on this EGR valve there is an N75 tucked away out the back there and we've got the little plugs like this what I do I'll clean it pressure washer it then I'll get my air blower tss, 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 and blow out tss, 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 all in the electrical connectors. Then I'll fire it up, take it for a run up and down, warm it up, and uh, yeah, that dries everything out. And as I say, I've never had any problem. But reason I cleaned it is I want it to look tidier under there, and I'm planning to take the engine out. And I don't want to keep getting dirty hands from removing stuff, washing my hands. So clean it before we take it out and it makes the experience a little bit nicer obviously on this one something's let go head gaskets let go or what have you it is pressurizing that is why the cap is loose and it's leaking water out the bottom but that is due to something else i think the water pumps failed pressurizing and that's now burst the radiator if you remember in the past video something's knocking on this front right wheel maybe a little on the left but anyway let's get it on the ramp and let's see what it's like underneath one thing I do mention is it's got a battery drain I got it back battery was fully charged let it sit for a few days went to fire it up battery was flat as you're at turns out that I can see the stereo is slightly lit up even with the key out and these do suffer sometimes with the ignition switch lives behind the ignition barrel used to be called the black box on vehicles back in the day well they peter out it's a common problem looked online you can get a decent quality one for about 20 quid if you're mechanically minded you should be able to fit it yourself steering cowling out few wires to unclip a little bit buried behind the ignition barrel but it's not too bad to do so i think we need to get an ignition switch for this one bleeping because we've got no water oh and that happened the first time too the uh the battery terminals need a bit of a clean up, I believe. Let's try that again. It does start well. Bit of a flappy belt, I'm not sure what is. But it runs really well. So what I will do is I'll take the engine out, I'll check the water pump and I will pull, will pull the head off. That engine runs really well. When we was on the way back, it didn't miss a beat at all. Didn't hold any water and I was freezing, but it runs crisp. Anyway, let's get it in the workshop. One thing I do want to point out She's a big girl, about two foot away from the spray booth, and we are close to going out the door. I'm going to spend five minutes working out the best position for the ramp legs to go under. With height issues, I've got a lot of stuff above. I can't go all the way up, so I'm going to be rolling about on my back, but you guys can just sit on your sofa and watch from there while I roll about on the floor. So, unfortunately, the wheelbase is too long for my ramp, so I will never be able to lift this right up and shimmy under so if I ever have to do anything I'll be having to do it like this I have managed to get the front legs under and lift it up and I have turned it round actually since the last shot something I want to mention now the tires on this are like brand new and the brake pads there's plenty on them discs are a little bit pitted from where it's been stood 
we'll probably end up replacing them anyway. Um, shock absorbers, they look to be original and there's no fluid coming out of them at all. Yeah, really good. Um, they seem to weather really well and take the mileage. So if you're thinking about buying one, don't be put off by a high mileage one at all because on first inspections, I'm really surprised. <clears throat> anyway, I want to start rocking the wheels, um, see if we've got uh, any movement. So we've got a little bit of movement. Back wishbone bush looks good. That much. Now, is that the track rod end or is it the wishbone? What we're going to do, I'll get the camera under in a minute and you can have a butcher's. Spins good. There's a slight roughness and that's from the corrosion on the brake disc and the pitting. And when you spin any wheel, they normally make that noise anyway. But what we're looking for is that small amount of movement. I'm going to go get an extra pair of hands and they can rock the wheel while I check it out with a camera. So I managed to find pinch. Thanks, bro. It's just the front that you can feel. Just move it that. You feel that? Let's see what it was. I can't do that and don't know whether it's track rod end. So we can see the drive shaft going in and out. It's either a case of the ball joint, it doesn't look too apparent. So there's a little bit of movement in the track rod end. Don't think it's the ball joint. Oh, here we go. It is the front wishbone bush. Front wishbone bush and track rod end. But we've got no split rubbers just a bit of play in ball joints. So believe it or not, that would go for an MOT just with advisory. I'm curious about this side. Got any top to bottom, wheel bearing any? No, just give it a spin. Yeah, and does it feel the same as the other side? A Little bit worse, isn't it? Because this is the side that was, uh, ow. This is the side I could hear and again, let's go straight in for the same bit. So we've got a front bush that's moving. You can put poly bushes in them. And the good thing about these arms, you can replace front bush, back bush, and the ball joints. You don't have to buy a complete arm. No play in that ball joint. Let's shimmy under. Come on, I'm on the deck. Get my hand around it. No playing track rod end. So I think it's literally just these front bushes. Yeah. Yeah, sweet pinch. Thank you. Let's try and get a shot, because we are on the deck. That's an original exhaust. The middle box is uh, slightly blowing open. But again, unless it's blowing, it'll only have an advisory for corrosion. And this is a big old van. Look how far back the wheel is. Let me get out and readjust. Big shout out to Pinch for coming and giving me a hand. Now, there's just a couple of things I want to point out, and I am absolutely blown away. So, they are the original shock absorbers. That is just dirt. The springs have got absolutely no corrosion on. The boots, they are literally with a clean. They are absolutely fantastic condition. If you had to replace shocks and springs, you're probably looking at a few hundred quid for both sides. When you do a shock or a spring, you always replace both sides. Now, let's have a little look. Can you see the anti-roll bar bush down there? That is original. I've seen the numbers on it. And there's absolutely no spacing, no deterioration of the rubber. Yeah, really nice. And the back wishbone bush, we can just about see it down there. There's no splitting, there's no deterioration. Yeah, it's done really, really nice. Let's go around to this side and have a little look. And this is the side where you're up against the curb, you're going through the puddles, and look at the shock and spring. Absolutely fantastic. We can see a little bit of separation on the anti-roll bar bush, but literally that's done 282,000 miles. Let's have a little look underneath, and as we can see, no split rubbers on the ball joints, original CV boots still holding on, and do you remember we've got a brake pad warning light? Well, it's not even plugged in. And if we see in the top of the shot, we've got a little blue wire here. Well, at some point it's been cut or broke 
and then they've tried to join it and then that piece has fallen off. But that goes to there, that will get rid of the brake pad warning light because we've got plenty of brake pads. Let's have a look at the other side. Same story with the other side. CV boots intact, ball joint rubbers intact. Apart from this front wishbone bush with a little bit of movement, there is absolutely nothing wrong. If you was to replace all the bushes on this arm, it's probably about 100 quid a side um, and it's really not too bad to do. We've got one ball joint bolt there, there's two spline bits holding the ball joint on and then we've got rubbers front and back. Let me uh, pan back a bit and we'll have a bit of a, a better view. That's the underneath and the front subframe. There is little bits of corrosion, but that's just where the paint's chipped off, stone chips. It's not rusty at all. We do have a tiny bit of a weep from round there, but I guarantee you that's just over the years people undoing the oil filter and then the oil spills out and they haven't cleaned it off. Sump is bone dry, gearbox is bone dry, everything else is really, really nice. Bit of a better view of the back. We can see the fuel cooler or fuel heater, whatever you want to call it intact really nice now because i can't get under it i'm gonna to have to pull the van forward a little bit put the back legs under and let's have a little butchers at the back so i've turned the van around again we've got it in the light in the doorway got it jacked up just on the rears and absolutely no play on the back wheels you don't normally get play on the back wheels that you do the front because there's less suspension there's no track rod ends and the wishbone arm is at a different angle, and that is absolutely solid. Um, tiny bit of binding on the rear caliper, but I think it's just because it's sat round and the discs are a little bit corroded now. It has been sat round for another eight days in the rain. Yeah, uh, very nice, like brand new tires on the rear. It's almost a shame to get new alloys, uh, slightly bigger alloys, because these are in absolutely fantastic condition. I think they were brand new just before it was taken off the road. Let's check the other side. I'm sure it's the same again. No play at all. Wheel spin slightly freer. Um, yeah, very nice. Loads of brake pads on it. No play in it. Let's have a look underneath. I'm curious to see underneath. If we look from the very back, closest to us, shock absorbers, absolutely fantastic condition. The slightest bit of corrosion, but a quick wire brush and a bit of satin black, they would look really good. Um, yeah, really nice. The wishbone arms have got a bit of corrosion, but that is just surface. Again, you could wire brush them down, bit of satin black on them, and they would be good as new. Next thing that's poking right in my face, Look at these brake pipes, absolutely brand new under the dirt. I've done transits that are a few years old with rusty brake pipes, Mercedes Sprinters, Mercedes Vitos, all had to replace brake pipes. Look at those brake pipes and it is the same for both sides. If I gave those a wipe off, they would be in fantastic condition. 282,000 miles and they look like with a clean and a wipe off, they've just rolled off the factory line. We can see there is what looks like corrosion on the rear springs, but it's just the paint. Um, if I got under here with a pressure washer, that would lift all of that off, then we could give it a quick wire brush, bit of satin black, and they are good to go. Same both sides, but again, it is just a case of the paint's flaking off. Now, there's another look at this original exhaust. And just to confirm, VW, rear box is still intact. The pipe looks really good, no holes blowing through it. Of course there's corrosion on it, it's 282,000 miles old. I might put a stainless on it because we do want to pimp it up a little bit. Slid under a little bit more and the linkage to the handbrake cable looks a little corroded. Bit of a wire brush and satin black, that would be all right. And there's a better look at that middle box. That has got a few, I won't say holes blown through it, but the outer layer is definitely shedding a bit of skin. Now, it would pass an MOT because I can't see any black soot. It would just have an advisory. And look at it under here. All the heat shield is intact. Sometimes this is all hanging down on other vehicles, that is. Um, yeah, I am absolutely blown away. It's not been off-roaded or anything like that because we've got no broken plastics. All the seals, none of them are punted in. I'll show you a quick shot on the seals. Have a look at those seals. There's a couple of stone chips that have slightly corroded. 
but if this was a transit of the same age, you would have had to replace that twice already. And believe me, I have a transit I know. What a brilliant candidate for spending some money on. Obviously, you wouldn't want to buy an old shed and then have to spend a lot trying to make it nice. This is absolutely perfect, and I think it would be the same for any T5 transporter, really, with corrosion issues, or lack of, should I say. If you're looking at buying one of these, don't be put off by the high miles, um, because these really weather well. All the steering and suspension, I believe, is original, without looking too deep, I believe it's original. So it's done 282,000 miles on the original setup. If you have got a few knocks and bangs, it's not overly expensive to fix it. It's not like some vans where they've got multiple arms, electric all this, electric that, sensors this, that cost the earth to fix. These are a basic setup. They age really well. Don't let the high mileage put you off. It is a pleasant surprise after looking at it. Couple of wishbone rubbers. I'll probably do the ball joints and wishbone rubbers, front and rear, both wishbones. I might get the polyurethane ones, I don't know, but we get decent ball joints. You can get cheaper parts but unfortunately they don't last. You actually pay, you get what you pay for. With regards to one of the wheels slightly binding, I think that'd be the handbrake cable. Just had a little look online. I think it's about 30 quid, 35 quid for a new handbrake cable. That does both sides. Um, Cause normally when you've got a binding caliper on a VW, it is normally down to the handbrake cable, slightly gripping, not slipping as it should. So as you let the handbrake off, it doesn't release it all the way cut the new handbrake cables, it'd be good as new. Uh, with regards to the inside, obviously it's done 282,000 miles. It does want a steering wheel, it does want a gear selector knob, gear selector gator, and a few other trim pieces, but for the mileage, it's really aged well. Um, probably 100 quid on little gadgets inside to uh, make it all nice. Put a new steering wheel on it. Most of the VW steering wheels are all interchangeable, so you can get a later steering wheel, steering wheel from a different VW, and most of them fit on. I am gonna do a full build series on this. Front end swap to a later one, tailgate swap to a later one, carpet line all the inside, make it nice, make it pretty, paint the outside, not sure on colours. I do have a DTE Facebook page, so if you wanna share your van, give me some inspiration on what colours to choose, you can join the Facebook page, comment on one of the videos, or I'll make a little post, and then you can comment on that, send pictures of your van in, and we can have a little butcher's, bit of a chit chat. Anything else to do with upgrades, suspension, I do want to lower it ever so slightly. Uh, someone commented about the H&R springs and stuff like that, so I want some good quality parts to go on it. I want to build a good van and make the most of the good body we got here. And just to run over it again, I mentioned it in the start of the video, if you're gonna go and buy a vehicle that spares or repairs, make sure you've got the knowledge to be sure that it is safe to drive on the road. If you're unsure, get a recovery truck, get a trailer and tow it back. If you found the video useful, click the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out.